Welcome to an exclusive Miami recorded conversation discussing the film Cuvitas Aida, an official selection of the 38th Miami Film Festival and Bosnia and Herzegovina's official submission to the 93rd Academy Awards in the international feature category. My name is Jay Laplan, and I am the executive director and co-director of programming for the festival. And whether you are watching this conversation in the movie theater or at home following the screening, I thank you for joining me to welcome Yasmila Zabanich, the filmmaker of Kuvaitis uh, Aida, excuse me. Uh, Yasmila is a veteran filmmaker and among the many international awards that she has won, uh, includes the prestigious Golden Bear at the Berlin Film Festival, the top prize there in 2006. And this is her fifth narrative feature. So welcome, Yasmila. Thank you very much. And hello to Miami audience. Thank you. We hope you, you can come to Miami someday. Uh, you, you know, obviously right now. <laughs> but we'll take great care of you and we'll take you to the beach and, and, and serve you lots of mojitos. <laughs> Wonderful. So, um, Yasmila, I'm, I'm very happy to be speaking with you today because if I had been speaking with you immediately after seeing the film, which I did several months ago, I'm not sure that I would be even able to speak or stop shaking. Um, or, you know, so, so horrified um, by what I learned from your film. Um, so what you accomplished in, in, in terms of placing us into this historical moment and making us live through that moment is nothing short of extraordinary. And I just want to start off by congratulating you and thanking you for this amazing film. Thank you so much. Um, so my first question is um, that, uh, you know, it's often said that those who ignore history are doomed to repeat it. And um, I'm wondering from an international or a global perspective, uh, was that your primary reason for, for making this film? I think reasons are always more um, emotional than rational. I live in Bosnia most of the time and I hear these stories of women who are still searching for their loved ones. You know, um, still 1,700 bodies are not found and mothers are searching for their sons and husbands and it, it's um, continuous pain since 95. And this is something that I, it, it really, I'm shaken every time I read about it, I hear about it, and I wanted to do it, uh, I think, mostly for these emotional reasons. Um, of course, the, I, I wish that film can um, offer us some knowledge and experience that we never repeat these things again. But, you know, after Holocaust, this happened. So we have to think what is wrong, why we are repeating the same kind of mistakes. And, yeah, I feel that films are powerful tools to enable us to be on, to understand others better, to understand other side better. So, um, yes, I'm hoping at least that people will um, understand each other better. Uh, that, that's a, a little hope for, for me. So to have this big, um, big uh, goals, uh, maybe it would be too much, but at least if one person is changed, that is beautiful. Yes, I, and, and it is a highly emotional and personal film, and that's quite extraordinary when dealing with with such an you know an epic um, historical incident such as such as this. Um, so you know so, something else that's often said about um, historical films is that they're just as much about the time that they are made as, of course, the you know the the actual subject matter. Um, for you, for for what this film means to to Bosnians right now in terms of the healing process that has gone on over the past 25 years since, since the war ended. Um, what, what does this film represent to, to Bosnians right now in, in, your, in your estimation? 
uh, what I hear from audience, because we had film in uh, cinema distribution, it was very limited uh, way of distributing the film because only 25 people can sit in cinema, but it's still cinema um, experience. And also we had it on um, uh, streaming platforms. Um, a lot of people tell me it was kind of catharsis for, for, for them. Uh, also, people who grew up in um, uh, other narratives where, you know, that genocide was uh, and still is denied, um, they wrote me and they called me to say how uh, thankful they are for um, putting missing pieces in what they always felt as a, a strange narrative. Because um, this narrative that denies that genocide happened is um, using um, is not using facts. It's just um, using uh, mythologies and uh, conspiracies and different kinds of stuff. Um, and it reminds me on the narrative from beginning of the war because it was exactly that. You know, a lot of fear spread in the society, a lot of um, division in society, fake facts, um, and and uh, not not seeing the reality in a in a right way. That's powerful. Um, so I, you know, as a, I, I'm 50 years old, and I'm uh, originally a Canadian, but now an American citizen. So at the time of this incident, I was, um, you know, a very young person, and I wasn't really aware of of the, you know, specifics of, of what was happening in the war. So I apologize in advance if my if my next question is a little bit naive. Um, but for for people who are are, are far removed from the story of, of, and and want to learn more. What what is the situation now um, between Serbia and, and Bosnia, Serbians and Bosnians, and how is this film maybe um, being perceived in Serbia? Look, um, we still have politicians that are ruling our countries um, with fear and with this. Uh, narratives that we can't live together and that um, we are, you know, uh, against each other. But that is um, a percentage or kind of elite, political elite, who is profiting from these divisions. Uh, what is, there is a lot of people, especially among art, you know, filmmakers, artists, who are seeing the opportunity only in working together and living together. So we are talking about very different um, situation. For m many filmmakers, my colleagues from Serbia, they, um, they, they love the film. They really want to... Um, I want this film to be shown to young people, to new generation. Um, and, uh, you know, we collaborate, like my actress, uh, Jasna Djuric, she's from Serbia. And she decided to be in this film, though it's a very risky for her, you know, living in Serbia, where this narrative that Srebrenica genocide never happened. Um, it, it is dangerous, you know, it is not a democratic society which allows people to um, tell stories they want. Um, so, you know, there are so many brave people, Serbian people who are for uh, living together who said these things during the war were really bad and we don't want to support it. But there are, of course, a lot of people who are supporting war criminals and they are repeating the same narratives from from 90s. Unfortunately, that didn't um, uh, change completely. Wow. That's so and, uh, yeah, the, main, the main thing, I think, in every war is that many people profit from uh, conflict. That's the bottom line. Doesn't matter. Is it uh, nationalism? Is it the different uh, political um, views? It's always question is always who is profiting, and many people are profiting from the conflict. Yeah, unfortunately, that is a history that is uh, ongoing, and we don't seem to be able to, to change. Um, thank you, thank you for that answer. Um, I want to pivot a little bit to the production. Um, can you tell me about um, the the way you constructed some of the film's most most powerful images? I'm thinking of of one early on in the film when when Ida 
uh, climbs on top of what it lo looks like a, a seems to be like a lookout tower and just sees the sea of humanity. Um, just in, a, in terms of a pragmatic matter, how did you get all these extras together? How were they directed? I mean, it's a, it's an overwhelming scene. Thank you. Um, so, uh, um, you know, constructing this film, we know we knew that it uh, we have to have a lot of people. We need to show masses in order to understand the tragedy and uh, that uh, genocide is about um, killing the whole nation in, you know, the whole city. So uh, we were sure that film has to have a lot of mass scenes, but uh, being, um, you know, very limited, uh, having very limited budget, um, the film was shot for 4.5 uh, million euros, which for my country is a huge budget, but for, uh, you know, normal European or especially Hollywood film, it's a very low budget. So, you know, we, we, were, we had limited sources, but we wanted um, to find a way how audience can always feel there are, there are you know, these masses are there. So there are a few scenes where we thought, okay, we have to show the numbers and with the rest of the scenes we will do it with the sound or you know we have to um, create um, in an intelligent way how to show parts of the people and the rest audience will imagine so the scene you are mentioning is definitely the one where we said we have to see this sea ocean of, of uh, human beings and uh, we had at, at that day, I think 500 extras that we had to move in order to multiplicate. And then in uh, visual effects, um, you know, everything was put together. And um, luckily, it was working uh, well, uh, because it's not easy to make these multiplications in uh, contemporary films where people are not in uniforms or dressed in a similar kind of way. But what was Important for us is also that we had a big support from um, extras um, who really wanted to be in the film. Many of them um, had experience of being in uh, concentration camps during 90s in the war, and they really gave, um, in a way, authenticity to the film. You know, they were also advising me when we did some some shots, um, and um, they are you know, faces show that they went through many things. Yes, it's it's, it's extraordinary that, um, you, you know, the, the, the photography and the sound and everything that you mentioned just works so seamlessly. I mean, I forgot I forgot I was watching a film. I, I was so deeply in, inside the story. Um, were you working with um, many of your key, your key creative collaborators? Were there people that you've worked with for, you know, throughout your career, or, or was it a lot of, of new people that you were working with? My uh, cinematographer, VOP Christine Meyer, she is um, uh, somebody that did all my films. Uh, she's originally Austrian, but living in Germany, and we met as students. And since then, we are doing um, everything together, which is really close collaboration because we have the same... Um, way of observing the world, uh, thinking about the arts, and uh, Christine is involved um, very early since, you know, early stages of screenwriting. Uh, we are reading, we are commenting, we are doing um, design of the shots. Um, I am, um, I produced this film together with my husband, Damir Ibrahimovic, and this um, is very important collaboration because um, Damir understands um, the responsibility of financing, but he also wants the best in the, in the shot. He's always there on the set and really solving problems, how they come, and uh, really pushing all uh, people to give the best um, of, of their creativity. Um, this time we had a co collaboration with nine uh, European countries. It's a system where you apply to state funds in order to get money for the film. And since we couldn't find money in Bosnia, we had to do this uh, nine countries. And each country asks 
for their creative person to be involved in a film. So I worked with um, people that I choose, but I had to choose from which countries. And I most with, with most of them, I didn't um, had a chance to work, but they were amazing people. Like editor of the film Yaroslav Kaminsky, who edited um, Ida and Cold War, was really important part of the creation of the film because he was coming uh, when uh, we had uh, we, we were still shooting and uh, he gave us few hints uh, where maybe we would need uh, to see Aida in a peaceful uh, moments that was for example not written in a script but he noticed that the rhythm is so fast that audience needs a moments of silence and and um, calming down so it was his suggestion and we um, decided to have one more day of shooting and have just these peaceful moments uh, which I think are very valuable in the film you're absolutely right. In nine countries, that is one of the most determined stories I have heard in several years. So, um, yes, <laughs> congratulations. Um, Aida is a, is a fictional character that you created to create a kind of emotional center for, for the audience, um, you know, to, to enter the story. Um, but one of the most powerful scenes for me, or one of the most powerful moments in this film, is um, near the end of the film when when Aida encounters a Serbian soldier that was a former high school student of hers. And, you know, this brief interaction where she's like, you know, it's me. Like, see, see me as the person, the, the teacher that I you know used to be. And uh, it, you know, it particularly fascinates me how you know middle class people who live in peace with each other for a long time can can suddenly turn into you know lose sight of the humanity of their neighbors um so i'm wondering if the the number of stories that you must have heard um you know to put this to put this whole story together how did you choose um what stories were going to be able to fit into the film and, and what films that you weren't going to be able to fit how did how did you go about making those those choices Yes, because there are a lot of um, stories that I heard and um, uh, just living in Bosnia, even, you know, if you are not doing purposely the research, uh, it's still a lot coming through media, through people you know. And there was a there, there were plenty of of them, and I had to find the right angle. So when I choose to have um, a one person story, which is Aida and her story of her family, uh, for me it was very important that she's translator. So she's between two worlds: world of UN and world of uh, Bosnian, where she belongs. Um, that was the first choice, and then I was uh, building what was dramatically um, important for her path. Um, I heard many stories of people who were uh, working in the same office, and then when war started, they were against each other, of professors and students who were um, looking at each other through through uh, guns. You know, there were many stories like that, and that is a that is a lunacy of war or idiotic, idiotic I don't know English words for <laughs> yeah for for war because it puts you in a situation where you what you can't imagine and it turns people against each other in um, unbelievable ways and also you know today um, people live uh, the, the victims live in the same city with uh, perpetrators. That is also reality of Bosnia today, which is uh, very hard to imagine because when we learned about the wars in school, like after the Second World War, we learned about tribunals and the processes against Nazis and uh, somehow the world looked like a um, fair place. It was, um, you know, very clear um, who, who did the Holocaust. And uh, after Bosnian war, um, you know, with all this genocide denial, with all these people who are still, um, you know, people who were 
um, who had positions during the war, they are still present in political life. They are present in uh, police, in the um, uh, system of government. And uh, then you think, why we never learned about these things? Because then you talk to people in Germany and they say, it was like that also in Germany, where Nazis, uh, because professors were missing in universities, they employed Nazis because they didn't have um, others to, you know, to, to teach. Nobody else was there to teach. Mm. But we don't hear so much about it. So this is uh, also true about peace. Peace is not easy. Peace is uh, sometimes even more difficult than than war because it is um, not uh, not just not nice. Mm, not clear. No, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, so uh, my, my last question, I could really talk to you for a long time, but I know you have limited time. So, uh, But my last question is about the title that you chose for the film. So it's, it's kind of a non-traditional title. I mean, it's in Latin. Um, it translates, loosely translates for, um, you know, where are you, where are you going or where are you heading, Aida? Um, can you tell me about why, why you chose that, that phrase and why you chose to, to, to title the film in Latin and, and this way? Can you yeah. talk about that? No, for me, it was very interesting, the story, which is um, a religious story of um, return. And um, for me, Aida has as a human being um, all qualities of um, saint and I think um, turning religion towards normal people towards people who are um, doing the best they can uh, is um, something which is important for my point of or, or my yeah point of view or my philosophy of the world Aida is for me somebody who is such a hero and such a um you know a powerful person that after this tragedy she was able to come to city where uh, perpetrators are around her and she can teach their kids and uh you know believe in in a society where they can live together so that's why i choose the title because it also says uh, where do we all go? Uh, where Bosnia is going? Are we going to um, close our eyes like in the end of the film where kids are playing this um, with, with this music and or they, we are opening our eyes and uh, really seeing what happened and seeing the reality or uh, just denying it and uh, not, uh, not 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 uh, moving on. Uh, also, it can be uh, universal where Europe is going, where U.S. is going, because we have the same uh, problems at the moment. Because I think this film is not only about the past, it's very much about us today. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Well, uh, Yasmela, I want to thank you for your time. Um, I, I, this is the first of your films that we've had in the official selection at the Miami Film Festival. Um, we are very determined uh, to continue following the journey of the film even after the festival, and we hope to encourage as many people to see it as possible. I do want to thank um, Indie Sales very much for uh, for providing us with the film and for uh, setting up this conversation. And um, we wish you the very best as well with the journey of this film. Thank you so much. Stay healthy and enjoy in films. And to you as well. Thank you.